Okay, we have seen a lot of smartphone launches this November and we tried our best to keep up with smartphone videos and those banger videos that you guys love. But this video, this video is slightly grander because the conclusion of this video will make more sense when you buy a smartphone in 2026. Ideally, October to November is the time when both Android phones launch their best processor and iPhones launch their A19 Pro chip. And we often see every Android company executives climb on stage and claim that they are beating the iPhone. I mean, this benchmark, that benchmark. And last year, we saw a different story. Android phones did get better than the iPhone. So what is the answer in 2025 or going forward in 2026? Are Android phones really what they promise at launch events? We got every Android flagship, the latest iPhone, tested them through three intense rounds to get you this winner. Pratik, take wiser, let's processing go. And before we get into the video, uh, like the video, usually these techie videos don't perform that well. Like, we need your support. Comment below or otherwise this real tech gets lost in those dancing shots and subscribe to TechWiser, that really motivates us. Back to the video. Now, before we show you the numbers, it's important to understand what makes these newer processors faster this year. So you can consider the processor to be like a cricket team. You have one captain, that's the prime core. It handles the toughest job like 4K video editing, gaming, or when you open 10 apps at a single time. Then you have all-rounders, which are your performance cores. They can do pretty much everything like multitasking, switching between different apps, background uploads, or photo editing. And then you have fielders, which are smaller players, efficiency cores. They can do smaller tasks like social media usage, always on display, or lighter tasks. And going forward from 2024, these processors have just removed the fielders, there are no efficiency cores. There's just one captain, prime core, and a lot of all-rounders, performance cores. Just like the Indian cricket team. Gambir sir Zindabad. Now here's what's interesting this year. All three new chips, the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5, Dimensity 9500, and Apple A19 Pro, all of them are built on the same 3 nanometer process. That means the player or transistors are smaller, so you can fit more of them, they use less energy and they heat up less. And just like in a match, how every team has a slightly different team formation, in processors also, each chip maker has built a slightly different team structure. Italy Gen 5 has two prime cores, six performance cores. So it's like the team now has two captains and a bench full of all-rounders. No fielders, no breaks. Everyone's built for attack. Dimensity, on the other hand, took a more balanced and efficient approach. The Dimensity 9500 uses one ultra core, three premium cores, and four performance cores which are underclocked. And Apple, Apple just keeps things simple. Still, two big cores and four efficiency cores. So we are going to test all of these phones in three simple rounds. Benchmark, video editing, and gaming and battery drain. And at the end of the round, whoever wins gets one point, and the phone with the most points is the absolute winner. Let's go. So we have the Realme GT8 Pro with Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5, Oppo Find X9 Pro with Dimensity 9500 and the iPhone 17 Pro with the latest A19 Pro. Now in benchmarks, we'll start with Antutu. So what this does is it runs your phone's CPU, GPU, RAM, etc. at 100% for a short period of time and then it gives it a score. Now we ran Antutu on iQoo 15, OnePlus 15, Vivo X300 Pro also. So we are only showing you two phones from Android side because it gets too big, but every score or benchmark is more or less the same on other Android phones. So here the the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 scores the highest followed by Dimensity 9500. The A19 Pro here has the lowest score. Now Androids, there's something called performance mode. So we turned it on and ran Android 2 on Androids again. Even after that, the 8 Elite Gen 5 scored the highest here. But here's an interesting thing. Before you hit the comments, if you see on Android 2's website at the bottom, see it's mentioned that Android 2 scores should not be compared between iPhones and Android. So that's there. So we moved on to platform neutral benchmarks like Geekbench. In Geekbench, in single core, the iPhone still performs better. Whereas on multi-core, oh my God, the Snapdragon here is better, in fact, way better. In fact, this is higher than even the MacBook M1 Air. Now, what we can understand from this benchmark is the single tasks perform better on the iPhone, whereas multiple tasks that require extra hands, Snapdragon does it better. We'll show you later on. And again, Snapdragon is followed by MediaTek. In the final benchmark, we had 3 Mark Wildlife Stress Test to measure real life performance of the GPU under heavy loads like gaming. The scores here are better on the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 and MediaTek Dimensity 9500. But stability wise, the iPhone has better stability here. But again, the scores that you're seeing on Snapdragon and Dimensity, 
that minimum score also is way better than what you get on iPhone. So in benchmarks, not unanimously, but Androids do beat iPhone. So a full point to Snapdragon and half point to MediaTek. Now, again, these are benchmark numbers and all these performance numbers, it made me curious. Like, is the performance here that crazy? So we did a video exporting test. We have the same video project on the Instagram edits app on all the three phones. The Find X9 Pro does it first, followed by the GT8 Pro, and both of them are at least two times faster than the iPhone 17 Pro. We tried this test multiple times and the result was the same. Now, this is shocking because for ages, we have seen Instagram, Snapchat being more optimized for the iPhone. So this comes surprising, but it is fairly logical. Android processors have more cores. So in tasks like video rendering, it will perform better. And second, cache memory. Imagine you have a lot of guests at home. You have to serve all of them tea and biscuits. So one way to do this is you go every time to the kitchen and bring tea and biscuits for every guest again and again. But if you keep the tea and biscuits on a small plate in front of all eight guests, you don't have to go back to the kitchen every single time. The guests can eat from the plates whenever they want. So these guests are your cores and plates are cache memory. On Android, you get dedicated and larger cache memory for every core. In the iPhone, you get a shared cache, like a bigger tray of chai and biscuits for all the guests. So for tasks that require a lot of performance for a short period of time, these Android processors will perform better than the iPhone. Now, so far, it's been a one-sided defeat for the iPhone, but we've heard gaming is better on the iPhone. Like, hey, all gamers play BGMI on the iPhone. Well, that brings us to the gaming desk. So we played two games here. First, we started with the all new Red Dead Redemption. So we played it on all the three phones for 35 minutes each. In RDR, on the iPhone and the GT8 Pro, you get the option to switch between graphic modes. We kept it on the performance option. Surprisingly, on the Find X9 Pro, you don't get that option. And we have seen this multiple times. Dimensity phones lag slightly behind in terms of game support or FPS for the newer games. Now, out of the three phones, the gameplay on the GT8 Pro was the best. Like, the graphics looked the best. And we were getting about 42 FPS and after half an hour of gameplay, the temperature was about 38 degrees. Now on the iPhone 17 Pro, the graphics looked meh, but the gameplay was smooth. There's no FPS counter here, but it was fairly above 40 FPS. And after a half an hour of gameplay, the temperature was around 36 degrees. Now on the Find X9 Pro, the graphics look good, but we're getting about 30 FPS. So everything appeared to be a bit choppy. Again, coming to the point, Dimensity processors in terms of newer games have very poor support. Now, at the end of our gameplay, the temperature on the Find X9 Pro was around 34 degrees. Now, RDR is a very new game, so we wanted something tried and tested, but heavy. So next, we played Withering Waves. We kept the settings to high on all the phones. Even here, the GT8 Pro performed the best, and we even turned on hyper frame rate, hyper HDR, basically everything at high. The game graphics looked really sharp. Plus, with the hyper frame rate, we were getting 120 FPS. Now again, after half an hour of gameplay, surprisingly, the temperature was just 34.2 degrees. This is absolutely insane, and it's not just the GT8 Pro, even the iPhone 17 Pro also surprised us. The gameplay was smoother and the temperature was just 31.6 degrees. Last year, we did a similar video in that the iPhone 16 Pro Max touched about 41.2 degrees. So this is some massive improvement. And as Tim Cook said to the media, liquid cooling is working pretty well on the iPhone 17 Pro. Glad that they realized after 17 generation that you need cooling in a smartphone because processors do run at high temperature. And speaking of high temperatures, that brings me to the Find X9 Pro. It can play the same game at the highest setting at 60 FPS. No issues in the gameplay, but the temperature, the temperature was around 43.1 degrees. That's high. Also, newer trend that we have seen in Snapdragon phones is you can download Game Hub and in fact play Windows PC game. The Italy Gen 5 can easily handle PC level games at 720p. So gaming on Snapdragon is getting next level. And it's not just about the GT8 Pro. We saw similar performance on OnePlus 15 and iQoo 15, which has the same Snapdragon 8 League Gen 5. So we are speaking more on processor perspective. So if you're looking for gaming, 8 League Gen 5 is the thing to go. Snapdragon gets one full point. iPhone gets half a point. Dimensity needs to improve the game support. Now, all right, from doing all of these tests, what's the takeaway here? See, going forward, I believe AI is going to be a major, major factor in smartphones. Most of the apps, games will start using AI. And if you look at Apple, Apple's top six executives have left in just one week. That includes AI design, design chief, etc. Apple is doing nothing when it comes to AI as of now. Oh, sorry, Apple intelligence. Apple's chip design head is rumored to leave. Tim Cook is rumored to retire from being CEO. So 2026 is going to be a very shaky year for Apple. So overall, considering the whole AI race, Android smartphones in 2025 are ahead of Apple. In fact, Snapdragon is the winner here, followed by Dimensity. And the margin between both of them is Unis B's ka farak. iPhone 17 Pro, even though it came last, it has improved compared to the last two iPhones, but the 
iPhone had this whole giga chad image that is not anymore true android flagships are winning and i'm not asking you to buy any of these phones like all of them you look at review videos and then make a call but this shiny iphone being the best that has to go if you are someone who know is an iphone user or looking to buy an iphone show them this video or give the crux of this video and ask them what is the exact reason they are using an iphone and now with newer flagships launched would they switch to the brighter side let us know the answers in the comment below this is signing off see you in the next video pew pew pew